Well, welcome everybody to our counseling session, and I'm glad that you all decided to show up for a group lesson. I can tell you that we have to really think about rights, and when I share that with you, I want to remind you that this group is about confidentiality, it's also about professionalism, and it's about knowing what is and isn't yours to share outside of our group. We have a lot of people here for the first time, we have a lot of people who are here online and we do record these sessions so that people can get a sense of what it's like to be you but what I can tell you is that we have to talk about illness in a way that is true so illness of the mind is when people do not understand what is and isn't true but we have a problem in America that I really want to cover before we get started and listening to you about what's been going on with each of you in the your weeks and in your sessions with your regular peeps and we like to make a little rhyme just to have a little fun time but what I'm going to say to you is that this counseling session this group training session this educational opportunity for you is to keep you briefly out of the jail cells you belong in you see each and every one of you has participated in a sexual assault of some kind but what you thought it was was just a schooling of someone what you thought it was was just a college prank and what you thought it was in your mind was just your attitude of I'm in power over someone. So when we do these sessions we're keeping you out of jail for a shorter period of time not at all we're just shortening your sentence some because you've agreed to this program. Now this program is not going to prepare you for the time that you will spend in jail for your sexual assault because technically what you did was a form of molestation and mutilation. And we're going to talk about the breadth of which that was. Some of you participated in cutting a chunk out of a priest's beard. Some of you participated in an attack on what you thought was queer and was a man who's been through some sort of thing overseas and you didn't know that. Someone gave you the wrong information on that. Some of you attacked someone that you would call trans but the law calls man and that was illegal and highly immoral. Some of you are here because you actually sexually assaulted someone. You decided while they were sleeping that you had the right to put your hands up their shirt and do a little tweaking. And others of you thought you had the right to, like this black man here, and I hate to single you out, but let's just be real, you thought you had the right to do the old school's way of black America, which was to unzip someone's pants and put your hands down on their penis, to be in control of them, to say, look, I've got you and you're not going to fuck my family here. And that was illegal, and you fucking know it. And openly, today, if you did that to a white man, you'd be dead. And we would definitely be seeing it and showing it on the news. My guess is you'd be strung from a tree. Not by the gentleman you had assaulted, but by the people who heard about it. So let's be clear. In America, we learn by age five that we have the rights to keep our hands to ourselves. But some of you did things worse than that. Some of you took a man out of his clothes for a week and you took a pair of scissors and you cut his penis. So let's call that what it is. It is definitely molestation and it's definitely mutilation, but some of you are just petty thieves in your mind. But under the law, you have molested someone by putting your hands in their pockets. And some of you are here for other crimes because you thought you had the right to cut a military uniform in their pockets. And one of you here said, well, it was my military from, from the first place. And we don't have any actual lawful proof about that, but we've already talked about that. You threw it out, the one that you're missing, and threw it out and dumped it out or had a tantrum in front of your girlfriend. And it is was on the ground, according to you, outside a garbage can, which in America and on college campuses all across the world sort of means that you didn't want it anymore to most people who are what we call pickers of trash. There of course are people who are in the garbage industry here because their attitude was that's my property. No it's not and it's not even your company's property until it enters your facility. What you are offering to the community is a receptacle in which you can place trash to allow your company who's been hired to do it to pick up the trash and do better recycling for our community. Now, if your company is not recycling well, if you're not teaching people in apartments through a newsletter how to recycle so that it's cleaner, 
for your company, that's on you. It's foolishness on you that you don't have videos online talking about recycling all the time. It's foolish that you're not using your social media channels and your emails for your customers to send them information which is according to the marketing establishments across the nation and what that formula is. And then, of course, the solicitation for business is much more modest in that. But what I can say to you is that each of you are here because you violated the law. And we even have some police officers amongst us who can tell you about the law, but they didn't practice the law. And that's why they're here. You see, there's always a man who wants to be more powerful than another man. And that in itself is illness. Because long ago we gave up slavery. And you don't have the right to turn a person, for some of you internationals, into a game. You don't have the right to use your technology to stalk someone. Because stalking is illegal. Now for some of you girls, we're going to make sure you get the truth about stalking. Because it's really easy for a girl to butter a man up, get him to do a whole bunch of shit for her, and then literally spend time in a couple dates with him. And then she does something in his house or in his car or something, and then she does that out of spite or does that out of curiosity or does that with someone who's a maintenance man, and then she screws herself because now she's got to accuse him of being something immoral and accuses him of stalking, and that was a lie. You spent plenty of private time with that man, whether you were married or not, and you cannot say that. A true stalker is trying to send you stuff that's warped, is trying to send you ugliness, is trying to send you hatred, is, trying to, is threatening your life. But that's not the case. When you took that situation to a legal situation, any human being has the right to fight back verbally, but you didn't allow that man the right to fight back, did you now? You went off and had a court case when he was already stuck in jail because of some other liar, and that was immoral. In America, we have rights, and the rights to ourselves is where we have rights to. And the rights to other people, we have no rights to. And you do not have the right to cut any person's beard, regardless of whether it's grown for their faith or not. And in one of your cases, it was grown for his faith. So you cre created a religious hate crime. In another one of your cases, you, hated, you created a gender or a sex-based crime by cutting facial hair. <clears throat> the molestations and mutilations of a person's pubic hair, you absolutely know, is on the edge of rape. So whatever the hell you were thinking that moment of time was an illness of the mind. In America, we have rights to our human body, and we have rights to protect it from monsters in the universe, monsters in the world, and monsters in our community. How a person chooses to dress, how they choose to wear their hair, how they choose to tan handle their medical records... How they choose to handle their medical situations is not something that any law enforcement officer has the right in which to conduct an investigation. No human being is, hitting, is committing fraud by not showing their genitalia, motherfucker. So you, I can't even think about how ill you were feeling in that moment of time to think you had the right to suggest that you had the right to hear gossip and then investigate someone's genitalia or internal cellular health based on something that he might have posted or something that she might have said depending on who and what we're talking about here. Now most of you have shared some of your stories so what we're talking about right now is not confidential in the context of this meeting room. But the minute that the, the hour closes, that the minute that our time is up, it is confidential. And you do not have the right to go off in a pillow talk with your family. You don't have the right to go off and talk to your friends about it. You have the right to share that. But we all know that people do that, and it's immoral. And it is, again, a mental illness of the mind. 